Splintered off the Missouri is a small tributary known to the locals as Prickly Pear Creek. On a summer day, a young couple, Leslie and Dennis Larson, walk along the creek bank, looking to pick some mushrooms. An hour later, the mushrooms remain unpicked, and Leslie Larson has gone missing. Dan LaFromboise is an off-duty Montana patrolman. He's waiting on his vehicle to be serviced at a local gas station. When a car comes speeding down the road and screeches to a stop, a man gets out. He ran across the street, and he ran up to me, and he hollered, he says, my wife just fell in the creek and she drowned. The man says his name is Dennis Larson. He asks LaFrom boys to follow him back to Prickly Pear Creek. On the way, Larson tells the lawman that his wife, Leslie, slipped and fell into the water. Spring rains had swollen the creek, making it deep and wide, with a dangerous current that dragged Leslie under. Laframboise listens to Larson's story, but doesn't believe a word of it. He said that he jumped into the creek to try to save his wife and try to find her. And he says, I jumped in at that first log jam. And he says, I just about got washed into that. And he says, I crawled out. And I says, pretty deep, huh? And he says, oh yeah, way up like this. Well, he wasn't wet. And I thought, what's going on here? That doesn't sound right. LaFromboise calls for backup, then begins to search the area. He follows the current downstream, figuring Leslie's body would get caught up in one of several log jams on the creek. The trooper, however, finds no sign of a body. Within the hour, sheriff's deputies arrive and take over the investigation. LaFromboise briefs them on what he has found, leaving them with a final suspicious fact. And I said, because where he showed me she fell in the creek, I said, there was one set of tracks going down there, and those were his. There was no woman's track in there at all. And I said, she had never been there, unless he carried her. The following day, county authorities have already closed the case, determining the drowning to be an accident. The finding does not sit well with LaFromboise. Unofficially, and on his own time, Dan LaFromboise teams up with the victim's parents to search the creek until they find a body. The longer he searches, the more convinced LaFromboise becomes that Leslie Larson never fell into Prickly Pear Creek and that Dennis Larson's story is just a cover for murder. I thought all the time there was something like that, that it wasn't right, he wasn't telling the truth or he wasn't telling the whole story, and he was hiding something. Over time, Lois Reynolds comes to share the lawman's suspicions that Leslie was killed by her husband, Dennis. Despite hundreds of search days and dozens of digs, neither police nor family can turn up a trace of Leslie Larson, and the disappearance goes cold. Meanwhile, Dennis Larson collects on his wife's insurance policy, one with a double indemnity clause, meaning that since Leslie died of an apparent accident, Dennis Larson gets double the money. The bereaved husband then moves cross country to the state of Maine. Kathy Frost is a 26 year old single woman. One day in August, she spots a personal ad from a man describing himself as an outdoorsman and seeking a lasting relationship. The man's name is Dennis Larson. Kathy and Dennis begin a courtship. Within three weeks, Dennis proposes. Less than a month after they first met, Dennis and Kathy are married. The next day, Dennis Larson takes out an insurance policy on Kathy Larson's life. It includes a double indemnity clause that will pay nearly $400,000 if Kathy dies in an accident. Three weeks later, the couple takes a trip to the high cliffs of Acadia National Park. At 7 o'clock, a call comes in to the National Park Service Ranger Station. We received a uh, call on the park radio of a report of a woman fallen off the cliffs. They called up our communications office who notified me. A man named Dennis Larson has reported that his wife fell from Otter Cliffs. The ranger sets off to meet Larson at the scene. I met him up at the road and then we came down here and he showed me where uh, she had fallen and where she had landed. McFarland walks carefully to the edge and looks over the drop. Kathy Larson is sprawled below. 
Dennis claims they were hiking together, looking for otters, when he heard a scream. Larson turned around and Kathy was gone. National Park Search and Rescue arrive on the scene, hoping to resuscitate, but Kathy is dead. Initially, park rangers have no reason to believe the death is anything other than an accident. A phone call to Kathy Frost's mother begins to change their minds. Deep down in my heart, something was wrong. Something happened that wasn't natural. Because she hated heights. And I know she wouldn't have been up there on that mountain. She wouldn't have done it if she wasn't made to do it. Audrey Pomroy shares her suspicions with the park rangers. First, there is her daughter's fear of the cliffs. Second, there is the insurance policy on Kathy's life. Third, Audrey had heard rumors about Dennis's first wife who disappeared. The Maine State Police are called in to investigate. Detective Jeff Harmon takes the case. He calls Audrey Pomeroy to find out more about her daughter and her relationship with Dennis Larson. To the eye of seasoned detectives, the pattern is clear. Harmon and Anderson both believe Dennis Larson killed his wife in Montana. Figured he got away with it, then killed again in Maine, each time collecting on a double indemnity insurance policy. The detectives decide it's time to turn the screws on Dennis Larson and bring him in for questioning. Harmon lays out for Dennis Larson his suspicions about the case and presents a key piece of evidence in the form of a medical examiner's report. It identifies bruises on Kathy Larson's arms that are not consistent with her other injuries from the fall. Bruises that are consistent with someone grabbing her forcefully, dragging her to the edge of a cliff, and throwing her over. Yeah, there's marks there. Kathy didn't put those marks on herself. And there's nobody else, there's nobody else there but you and her. And we discussed before. Okay, look, I know that those marks are there because I can see them. That's right. So all I can do is theorize as to what happened because... The marks are there, Dennis. Yeah. They, they, okay, they, they're she's not... ready to fall, right? Why couldn't she go like that? They're not caused by her. How do you know? Dennis, they are not caused by her. Dennis Larson bobs and weaves, but can come up with no satisfactory explanation for the marks on his dead wife's arms. Harmon continues to push, and Larson finally breaks, sort of. There was a dramatic change in the story from started out being purely an accident to there being an argument to there being an argument with a physical confrontation. I guess we went down by the cliff, and, and she says, I don't love you anyway, and gave me a push. And it pissed me off enough to where I gave her a push. And we weren't all that close to the cliff, but but I pushed her hard enough to where she stumbled backwards and, and went off and scraped her belly and fell over the cliff. Larson crafts his story to cover the bruises on Kathy's arms, but does not go so far as to confess to premeditated murder. Still, Jeff Harmon believes that Larson's statements will be the crux of his circumstantial case. The suspect is arrested on charges of insurance fraud and remanded to the county jail while Harmon works on getting him extradited to Maine. The following year, Larson tells the same story to a Maine judge. After eight days of testimony, he is found guilty of first-degree murder. I wanted him to get life. I was kind of disappointed the judge gave him 50 years, but it's better than 20. Larson is locked up at Maine's Thomaston State Prison, and the case of Kathy Frost is brought to a close. Tree that had fallen down into the, to the creek and the water was riding up pretty bad. And I pushed her in at that point. And she got tangled up in the in the limbs and couldn't come up for air because the stream was was rushing by too quick. And she drowned right there. Justice. It's finally justice for Lois. Just three months after confessing to Leslie's murder. Dennis Larson's body is found at the bottom of the Thomaston Prison rock quarry, a clothespin on his nose, and his mouth wrapped with tape. Scrolled across the tape is the word Geronimo. The official cause of death is listed as suicide. 
To this day, Leslie Larson's body has never been found.